What's up guys, Tristan here, and I'm back with a very special video. Uh, today, I'm gonna be talking about why I plan on purchasing the Canon EOS or EOS R6. So yes, I did wake up at five o'clock a.m. Western time this morning to watch the virtual product launch on Canon's website live. Um, they unveiled the R5 and R6 along with several other products and I couldn't be more excited about what Canon is doing. It was really cool to see uh, Peter McKinnon kick it off. I wasn't expecting that. The dude dropped three videos on the cameras today and they were awesome videos. Now after watching the entire virtual event where they covered the R5 and the R6, after careful consideration, I've decided to go with the R6. Now, don't get me wrong, the R5 is a powerhouse of a camera and I'm actually shocked that the price isn't much higher for that but the $24.99 for the R6 is much more forgiving on my pockets. So enough beating around the bush, here is why I plan on going with the R6. To be honest, for me, there's not a huge drop off between the R5 and the R6 in terms of video specs outside of the 8K RAW, which is just ridiculous. However, there is a huge drop off if you're using this camera for photography. The R5 comes with a 45 megapixel sensor while the R6 comes with a 20 megapixel sensor. Um, this would be a big deal if I was gonna use the R6 primarily for photography, but I'm not. It's primarily for video. And again, not a huge drop off there. I really need a camera that can shoot 4K up to 60 frames per second without that horrible crop. Canon, welcome to the party. And honestly, I really don't even mind the 120 frames per second at 1080p because that can just be upsized and post. Up until now, when I've been shooting with my 60 Mark II, I always shoot at 1080p because that's the highest resolution it can go. And I just upsize it to 4K for YouTube purposes, but the quality still isn't quite there. I'm shooting on 4K now with my EOS R. It's just backed up really far. Um, but again, that crop is just terrible and I'd rather not have to deal with that and the R6 solves that problem. So a couple of features that I'm excited about with the EOS R6. Um, first of all, it comes with IBIS. It comes with in-body image stabilization, something that my EOS R does not have. It does have uh, digital image stabilization, but it does crop in when you turn it on and it gets a little wonky at times. But nonetheless, obviously the IBIS will make your shots a lot smoother and your B-roll look that much better. The R6 also comes with C-Log, something that's very new to me still, especially with the purchase of my new EOS R that I got two weeks ago. If you guys watch this video up here, you can definitely tell how much I've been enjoying shooting in C-Log. It's just so much easier to color grade and add LUTs to. It's a beautiful, beautiful color profile. And the R6 also comes with the second generation dual pixel autofocus, which not only tracks human eyes, but now you can track animal faces and eyes as well, which is pretty cool, I guess. Something I'm really excited about actually, and it may not be that big of a deal to you, but it is to me, is the dual SD memory card slot. I don't know about you, but once I get this R6, I'm probably going to be shooting 4K full time now, and we all know how big those files are. So being able to put two 128 gig cards into the card slot to shoot a little bit longer, that's actually really nice. Now body wise, I'm really happy that they decided to bring back the wheel and the joystick on the back of the camera. It just makes it that much easier to navigate. The EOS R does not have either. Um, and I had to get used to not spinning the wheel on the camera just, and it's just, it feels weird to me. I just like the ability to spin the wheel to cycle through my photos and my videos and the R5 doesn't have that. You just have to tap a button to go through each photo or go through each video and that's really not intuitive for me. Also, the touch bar on the ESR is kind of finicky. I assigned it to adjust my ISO, and there would be times where I'm setting up a shot or in the middle of a shot and I accidentally hit the touch bar and it adjusts my ISO, and that's just really inconvenient to me, so I decided to disable the, the touch bar, and I just settled for adjusting my ISO on the touch screen. One thing that I do wish the R6 came with was the top-down LCD screen on top of the camera body. Um, the R5 does come with that, and oddly enough, the predecessor, the EOS R, comes with a top-down LCD as well, but for some reason they decided not to put it on this camera. But it does have the wheel dial at the top where you can switch between manual, auto, aperture priority. So that's easily forgivable. It's not that big of a deal. As far as batteries go, the R6 is powered by an updated version of the LPE6 battery. Um, and my one question is, are the older ones that I'm using for the EOS R right now and for my 60 Mark II, are the older LP E6 batteries compatible with this one? Because if so, I have plenty of those and I won't have to go out and spend more money on batteries. So 
With all that said, um, once I get the R6, I'm probably gonna make that my primary shooter and have my EOS R be my second camera or my backup shooter. And this also means that I'm going to be going completely mirrorless. Remember a couple videos back where I said I may be selling my 6D Mark II to upgrade? Well, I'm selling it. This is the 6D Mark II. So if you're interested in purchasing this camera, hit me up on Twitter or Instagram or email me. I have all that information in the description below. Hit me up and I'll give you details on this camera. It's an excellent shape. Um, I baby all of my equipment. I don't beat it up like uh, Casey Neistat does. So I think it's still in pristine condition. So that does it for this video, guys. Again, these are all the reasons why I'm deciding to go with the R6 instead of the R5. And again, don't get me wrong, the 8K RAW on the R5 is super enticing, but for my personal needs, I don't need that right now, but maybe later on down the road. So I'm interested in what you guys think. Which camera are you gonna go with, the R6 or the R5? Have you pre-ordered already? And if so, which one did you pre-order? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm done rambling here. I'm gonna go ahead and say what I say at the end of every video. Like this video if you learned something or if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel. I upload videos weekly. My name is Tristan Irvin. Follow me on social media and I'll see you in the next video. Later.